what I was hoping for was some very, very slow and boring stuff to take us into the holiday season. Nope. That's not what we got. My name's Jay. Oh, welcome to Jay's Corner. I am the author of Maximize Your Medicare. I'm also Education Fellow for Alliance for a Lifetime Income. Uh, let's just get right to it. So yesterday, the Federal Reserve increased interest rates by 50 basis points. And what I thought I would do is talk about dot plot. What in the world is the dot plot? This was what consumed everyone after the announcement or during the announcement. Questions about what dot plot was. Here it is. This is uh, from Bloomberg. Okay, so the question here was this 2023 that these number of this concentration of dots here about what the voting members of the Federal Reserve thought that interest rates, their Fed funds rates was going to be next year. This was higher than expectation. As a result, risky asset prices didn't like that. And that continued on yesterday after they saw this graph. And then today, where quite dramatically, notably down, although finished off the bottom, you know, if you see, if you look at the uh, happy talk on different financial news channels, this is not difficult to understand. It is not difficult to understand. And that's the point of Jay's Corner, right? Is that there's a lots of jargon. There's lots of lingo. If you understand building blocks, you can get to actual reasonable answers. Common, use your common sense logic to understand what seems to be complicated it is knowable. To newcomers, this is the singular formula describing the price of risky assets given uncertainty in the future. You can twist this in many different ways. For example, this is the, the, the value of a rental property. The NPV is the price you should pay. That's the minus C, which is the pr purchase price. C1, C2, all the way to CT over time is kind of your projected rent minus maintenance cost that you've got to eat. And then R here is the cost of money, the denominator, interest rates, your cost of borrowing. And from there, the basic idea is that if NPV is positive, when you add up all these numbers, you see this minus C0 is the cash flow. These are in cash flow terms, so you're paying money out, so it's minus. When you add all of them up, if NPV is positive, then it's a worthwhile project. They're using this framework, a variation of this framework. Merger and acquisition, how much an individual stock is worth. Like I said, how much a rental pro how much you should be willing, whether or not a rental property purchase price is worth it. Diff seemingly very different financial topics, one contract, one. So yesterday, this dot plot here, these dots is Christmas tree. This dot plot basically called into question, let's just say, for example, C1 is this year, C2 is next year. Let's just make these year. The issue here is this R down here is higher than what people thought was going to be on that dot plot. As a result, denominator higher. What does that mean? NPV lower, period. That's it. Now there are nuance here and here's the nuance that I want to show you. And that's the point of today's video. Is now you can see how I'm linking together building blocks on Jay's corner. There's the URL down there at the bottom, jo.subzac.com. If you're a newcomer, please. There's a free and premium version. This kind of thing, for example, is the general framework. But the issue here now, now with new facts, right, is R is higher than what they thought 48 hours ago. If that's the case, on top of the fact that R is higher, R on, for the sex under the C2, is the fact is you see this dot, 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 and you've got all these other different days. That's year three, year four, year five, year six, 
year 10, year 30. Is that when you get to 2023, what ends up happening? Voila. So you may have thought that I've like tried to give you different pictures to kind of describe the future or estimates of the future, right? Because you don't know for sure. You don't know for sure. You know, the other day I saw somebody say they don't call finance. They don't call this estimation process a science. I completely disagree with that. Completely disagree with this, right? The science of estimation is still a science. It just so happens there's error, right? That doesn't make it non-scientific, right? Nobody would call hurricane forecasting a non-science, not a true scientist. There's a model of estimating where the path of the hurricane goes. Does that mean that the hurricane, after the fact, hits the hits the spot directly? No. In fact, if it does hit the spot directly, that's kind of the random, right? On average, that's where it goes, according to the model. The model's not made up. You don't, like, open a Cracker Jack box and pull out this model. <laughs> Very certain of that. The persons who've created this model, they're real good at science. Really good. In the same way, the exact same way, not kind of sort, in the exact same way, the issue here is you are now going to be at C2, 2023. That number is higher as a result of this dot plot. The issue then is that they all know, market participants know, Hey, in 2023, you're still at the red arrow. That also means that later, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, R2, R3, R4. Now what ends up happening? It is very possible that the interest rates could be even higher. As a result, today, this NPV is therefore lower. It's one more nuance here. And that is, I've said on Jay's Corner, and well as every broadcast that I can remember to add this, this is not just simply one thing. One thing is R, right? Meaning that the level matters, right? Which means that a year ago, two years ago, right? R, this R number here at the denominator was basically zero, which basically made all of these this NPV cal calculation very easy. And if anything, R was moving in very thin ranges and lower. So it was two met two things. R is low in absolute terms, right? In other words, two years ago, R was basically zero. Now it's 4%, right? The Fed has in increased interest rates, what? 350 basis points, right? So the R here is 0 0.035 higher, basically, than it was two years ago. You just take, write it down sometime and then square one of these numbers and see how much less valuable NPV is. Just on a simple thing, just write 100, 100, and then start dividing just two, two time frames. The difference in NPV is dramatic. But it's not only that. The second factor is it's more variable. And this is the reason that I create that I show you this particular image. Because you see that the blue curve on the far right, it is not only that this number here, right? This number here is just zero from the mean. So let's just now, now this mean number here, according to the dot plot, 
is at some number, but that's still the average expectation. But what I'm also saying is, is that given the backdrop of what's happening on the planet, right? And you'll be on today. Emerging markets issues because they have they have U.S. dollar denominated debt. Foreign exchange issues because of the fact that, for example, they've got to pay back in dollars when all when their receipts are in their local currency. Right. We've got these other layers. The issue here back to the United States is the fact that it's not only that this mean, the highest point here on this blue curve is higher, making this lower. But in addition to that, if you're wrong, it's not only that, but the variance, the width, the standard deviation for you persons who know anything about statistics or have heard of it, right? It is now more variable. That as a result, now let's say, for example, that doesn't affect necessarily because they're not even committing to it to next year, much less in two years. For all you know, for all anybody knows, we could be here in year in a year and instead, whoop, our dot plot was wrong. And oh, we could be down here at four and a half. We could be at six. Now, we hope not, right? Because that means mortgage rates higher, credit card loan higher, auto finance higher, cost of living is higher. It's going to be indicative, it would be accompanied by higher inflation, no question. R is related to inflation. The Taylor rule lesson, let's just again beyond today but the issue here is when you do that and also the amount that you could be wrong then is also wider in other words in other terms this blue curve that i'm pointing to on the right is not only at a higher number in absolute terms but the shape of that curve is flatter wider these are two dynamics, two dynamics that simply did not occur, did not exist two years ago. As a result, you can understand why the NPVs of all risky assets swinging around in very choppy, volatile fashion Something that is going to be difficult to continue, right? We've just come out of a period of the last two months where you could say that R was then lower and, candidly speaking, you've had the other factors fairly stable-ish. So as a result, it has allowed happy talk on the, of, by citizens of Numeratorville who only pay attention to the top. C1, C2, CT. They get their day with in front of the microphone. Markets of risky assets higher. However, that was empowered. That was enabled because of the fact that there was no talk about the more the larger, bigger factor, the denominator. Thought that this would be helpful, especially in light of, uh, you know, the chairman's comments. <laughs> I've broken like every copyright rule here, but th this was too funny to pass up on, right? I mean, so anyway, continue on here. The, this is the newsletter itself. I just released it. By the way, this is not new, right? And I'll, I'll close it here. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you've liked today's video, is that you know, this is not new. I have been showing this to you for a long time. In fact, I had noticed some displacement of all of the different NPVs of different asset classes at the end, at the beginning of 2020, well, what year is this? 2021 at the beginning of last year. That's what created, that was the catalyst to the beginning of Jay's Corner. Down here. We've got the subscriber sections. We've got year-end issues and opportunities. Here's the mutual fund example. 
not advice, of course. This is never financial advice. It is, however, insight on how to think about different components of your financial situation. All right, everyone. Have a great day. I'm Jay. This is Jay's Corner. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like it. Thanks.